Classic Ristos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's Insurance, where you can be a member of the Shannon's Club, Pace Farm the Enjoyable Egg, Hair and Forbes Machinery House, and Gun Lake Quarries. And today I bring you to Cootamundra, New South Wales. It's going to be a split episode, but first, a building appropriately titled the Old Toy Factory. And of course, what is inside. And you're about to see it in this week's Classic Restos on the Road. The Toy Factory, what a brilliant name. And in this case, this building was a toy factory here in Cootamundra for a short time. The raw timber was fed through the back and painted timber toys came out of the front. Today, the building hosts toys of a different nature. And if you enjoy your European classics, well, you're going to love this. Good morning, Graham, how are you? Very good, thanks, Fletch. How are you? Good, thank you. What an amazing shed. Oh, yeah, it's a good toy shop. Yeah, good good place for all, all the gear. Yeah. Stuck here in a side street of Cootamundra. Mm -hmm. how, how easy is this? Yeah, real easy, actually. <laughs> Except the upkeep of it. It's a bit of an ongoing thing, but, uh, yeah, it keeps us, uh, keeps us out of mischief. Gets us out of bed every morning, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, you've got to have that. But I can't believe how, how neat this place is. And yourself, uh, a man of stance, it's the, it's the pants he chooses his shirt by. He's the only guy that leaves the hairdresser with his hair in a bag. This man's immaculate. The bench, the tool placement, this is just brilliant, Graham. Well, my wife Robin says... Uh, I've got to be tidy like this because my memory's no good and if I put something down, unless I put it back where it belongs, I'll never find it again. So that's the real reason for it, I guess. Yes, I've got to agree with that, Peter. <laughs> yeah. Now, how long have you been here for? Um, we're into our seventh year now, Fletch. This is such a diverse building. Uh, once upon a time, uh, a toy factory, uh, it was then a panel shop for a while, right? Yeah, we bought it off a smash repair uh, business. Um, they had a, a, a big panel shop here, an RMA depot and all the rest of it. But yeah, it started off life as a toy factory. Mm. They built wooden toys here, and that was built in the early 1980s. Uh, and they bring the, uh, uh, the bare timber in this end, and it must have gone down a conveyor line down here and came out the other end as painted wooden toys. and. Yeah. That worked like that for a while, but they made other wooden stuff yeah. as well. That's brilliant. And um, the dust-free spray booth, still in place. Do you you still use that? It, it's still uh, active? Yeah, oh, yes. It, it's all heated and everything, actually, Fletch. That's, uh, you can dial up the heat for it because he, the smash repair guy used to do a lot of baked enamel work. Yeah. Um, so we uh, inherited that al along with the building. And Graham, the machinery before CNC, manually operated, the milling machines, the lathes, the, it's beautiful, this old equipment that you have here. Yes, uh, Fletch, it's, uh, it's good old stuff too and it's accurate uh, and it suits me because I'm not a, a computer person. You know, I wouldn't know how to program them, but uh, yeah. you know, the old manual stuff is fine. Now, over the years, obviously, uh, the European car side of things uh, is your passion. Um, you have the parts that you've got here. Um, talk about, you know, you, you, you just ne you'd never be stuck in here. You could almost isolate yourself and, and build an entire car. Or you've just got everything here, Graham. Yeah, that's our passion, actually. <laughs> that's, that's, what we, that's what I love to do, mm. is start from virtually a chassis yeah. and build a car. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, well, we've got a couple we've done like that. Um, but uh, of course these days it's very difficult because you've got to have engineer certificates to register them and all the rest of it. But uh, yeah, the, the, it's, it's a lovely way to operate, I think. Yeah. I love it. You know? It's funny how the laws change, but the cars stay the same, don't they? 
Yeah, well, back just after the war and before the war, there was a lot of road-going specials built, some with aircraft engines and, you know, um, you know, you'd start off with an MG, put a Holden engine in it and all that sort of stuff, put a Buchanan body on it, yeah. and, and uh, perfectly road registrable. And, uh, but you do that today, you, all the hoops and that you've got to jump through and the expense you've got to go to for engineer certificates, just not worth it. No. Absolutely. Now, on that note, stick around because after the break, we return to Graham Shed and it'll be time to check out some of his classic cars. We've always had a few cars. They're all special. The T-Bird. Oh, that's mine. The Combi for when we want to get away. The XR8. It's going to be a classic. They're all insured with Shannon's. We've also got Shannon's home and contents cover. Which helps protect our automotive collectibles, tools and memorabilia in the home and garage. If you're motoring enthusiasts like us, it's got to be. Shannon's. Shannon's. Insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Call 13 46 46 for a quote. Heron Forbes Machinery House has been family owned and operated for over 85 years and it's easy to see why. Planning on welding? Look at these welding tables and clamps, air compressors and different air tools, sandblasting cabinets, through to spray guns. Everyone is welcome at Machinery House. There are competitive freight rates around Australia and you can buy online at machinerywhouse.com.au. So remember, Hair and Forbes has the range. Well, the cars in the shed are mainly sports cars because that's where my love is. They'll all be fairly collectible. Some are probably even now, but even the more modern ones I see as being quite collectible down the track. And as far as I'm concerned, they're better than money in the bank. Um, but they vary a bit in, in their in their makes, but basically they're all sports cars. This car behind me uh, is a 1949 MGTC. Now, this particular one's got a 1500cc TF engine in it, but initially, uh, originally it had a 1250cc over a valve pushrod engine, twin SUs, four speed gearbox. Um, it uh, didn't have much in the way of brakes, but uh, they managed to stop them, but uh, not very effectively. But um, pretty basic cart springs, beam axles, hard sprung, um, bounce from, you chased it, if, if, when you're driving it down the road, you chase it from one bump to the next, you know, it's uh, fairly tightly sprung, and a bit of a bone shaker. <laughs> Passion really um, with Alfa Romeo uh, were the older ones. Yeah, the last, as far as I'm concerned, um, the last good Alfa Romeo that was built was the 116 series. They were front engine transaxle cars, which, you know, they had the gearbox, the diff, and the clutch all down the back. Um, that was the last of the proper Alphas. The more modern Alphas had lost it. Uh, probably built to a price, they were taken over by Fiat. Um, they were nice to drive, but uh, horrible to work on. <laughs> Complicated, electronic, yeah. But uh, no, give me the old stuff. I like that era before the war. And probably, probably up to the end of the 50s. But mainly before the war, there was some fantastic stuff built before the war, particularly with the European stuff. The next car I'd like to share with you is this one here. 
It's called the Zephyr Special. It was built in 1955 by a South Australian, Eldred Norman. It's quite a fascinating car. It's got a terrific history. It's run in two Australian Grand Prix. 1955 at Port uh, Wakefield, South Australia. 1961 at Malala in South Australia. By that time it was being driven by the second owner. Eldred Norman drove it, drove it at 1955 at uh, Port Wakefield. And then it was on sold to a chap called Keith Rilston. Keith Rilston really made the history of that car. He, uh, he used to compete at the highest level. And it was probably the last of the Australian specials that was very competitive against the then onslaught of the Cooper Climaxes that uh, were uh, all conquering virtually, not just in Australia, but virtually all around the world. It was a time when uh, Sterling Moss and Jack Bradham uh, were driving for uh, the Cooper Car Company. And uh, um, Keith Rills can, could keep the guys running those Cooper Climaxes very honest. In fact, he, he, he beat many of them uh, in Australian competition. It's quite a fascinating car mechanical-wise. It's built with a, uh, a Ford Zephyr engine, which has got a Raymond Mays head on it. It's highly supercharged. It runs on straight methanol. It's probably putting out in the vicinity of 280 to 300 horsepower. Um, it's very fast. It'll pull 160 mile an hour down the straight at Phillip Island or Eastern Creek. It, it, um, it's got a transaxle at the back, that diff and gearbox combined, out of an old Matador truck and the clutch and flywheel are back at the rear of the car as well. It's got the independent front suspension uh, out of a FJ Holden, which was bolted to the front of the engine. Um, the engine's a stress member of the whole construction of the car. And there's a six inch diameter steel tube that runs uh, back to the transaxle. Uh, and the transaxle actually uh, holds the rear suspension so it's virtually a backbone constructed car. The front end is a, a slightly modified front end out of an old FJ Holden, of all things. Uh, it's been narrowed, but the cross member is actually bolted to the front of the engine. Uh, Keith Rilston modified it slightly by lowering the inner upper wishbone pivot points. Now we've owned this car since the early 1980s, and uh, <laughs> there was a bit of a, a bit of a history involved there. When when, when um, we were racing the little Cooper, and I can remember this Zephyr coming past me so fast, I thought I was in reverse, and I said to Rob, my wife, "Gee, I'd love to get a hold of that car sometime." Anyhow, it passed through another owner, and we actually knew the guy that had bought it um, and we said to him, if you ever wanted to sell that car, could you please give us first option? Anyhow, 12 months later, I was at work, phone rang at home, Rob answered it. It was Peter DeMac. He said, I'm going to sell the, the Zephyr. Are you still interested in buying it? And Rob said, yeah, um, how much? And he said, how much it was? And it was a bit of money for us back then. So she said, we'll take it. <laughs> and went down to the bank manager, organised mortgages in the house and allowed him to go and buy the car. So you know, it, uh, it's certainly uh, a member of the family. <laughs>
It's just fiberglass and plastic. But it's a passion that Shannon's understands, which is why my Fords are insured with Shannon's. And now, so's the home. Call Shannon's on 13 46 46. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Own a classic? It just has to be insured with Shannon's. Why not pick up the phone and give Shannon's a call for a quote and a chat on 134646 to discuss the policy and premium that suits you best. And keep in mind too that the Shannon's Club awaits you. For more information, visit shannons.com.au. And coming home from Cootamundra, or whenever you use the Hume Freeway, at Sutton Forest, just south of Mossvale, New South Wales, just in off the road, is Heather Bray Pies. It's the perfect place to cruise to in your classic car or on your bike. How cool is this? And who doesn't enjoy a pie? You can stop, revive, survive, and enjoy a delicious Heather Bray's pie, cooked on the premises right here. And while you are enjoying your mouth-watering pie, rinsed down with your favorite tea, coffee, or hot chocolate, you can take in the ambience of this unique place. From the smell of the cooking, through to the FJ Holden Ute inside, the place screams come and visit. Heather Bray's Pies is as dinky die Aussie as you'll find and these pies represent the preservation of Australian heritage and cuisine. Every pie uses Australian ingredients wherever possible in the baking, again reflecting the Aussie culture of every one made. Russell Cox is the owner and here he is to tell us more. How nice is this place, Heather Bray's Pies? How are you, Russell? I'm very well, thanks, Fletch, and welcome to my pie shop here in the Southern Highlands at Sutton Forest. Isn't this incredible? What inspired you to put a pie shop here? Well, look, it's a, it's a good travel distance from Sydney, and it's a traveller's stop. And what we've found up at Heather Bray, where we've been for, for decades, is that give people an opportunity to stretch their legs, have great food, come in and enjoy the Heather Bray's Pies experience, but down here on the Hume Highway towards Canberra and Victoria. That's amazing. So how long have you guys been going? As you've just alluded to, just north of Newcastle, right, at Heather Bray's? That's right. Uh, up at Heather Bray at Raymond Terrace, we've been there for two decades, uh, and we've become quite an institution up there. Down here, we've been here for five years now. Now, as soon as we walk through the door, the iconic FJ Ute. What a beautiful example, sitting here in the pie shop. The poor old girl, it's in retirement, it's resting up, it's never going to see a rough road again, it's never going to see the rain again or a severe heat. It's inside here, nice and protected. Wow, that's a, that's a nice touch, Russell. Yeah, no, that's right, Fletch. And we've got a pie cabinet on the back of the truck so you can get your pie from off the back of the truck. <laughs> and it's our best attraction in the whole establishment, the FJ Holden inside the shop. And how unique is it? It doesn't matter if you've got a classic bike, a classic car, classic truck, you could be on your pushy. There's just something about a little adventure to your pie shop. Well, that's right. No, a, a, pie, a really good artisan-made pie is something to be looking out for to try and find. And if it's on your travel path where you're going, or even just to, to seek us out, it, it's quite a find. Now, Russell, I'm not expecting you to let any secrets out of the bag here, but obviously you've got your own recipes of the way that you, you make the pie, design the pie, build the pie. That's correct? Oh, absolutely, yes. At both of our bakeries, all of our pies and cakes are made on the premises from scratch. Uh, we use the best quality flour we, for, for our pastry and margarines. We use the freshest meats and vegetables. Nothing's frozen as we make the pies, and everything's sold fresh across the front counter. Yep. And I like to, when I was doing the research on this guy, the, the Australian ingredients is what really stood out as well because this is what it's all about, uh, supporting our own. And uh, there's just uh, something very, very unique about this place here. And to think, as you said, you've got uh, Raymond Terrace as well at Heather Bray, which is very, very neat indeed. Um, we selected a day here, it's early in the morning. Uh, the people haven't started really coming in yet, but just quickly describe what it's like with, with car clubs and, and the attendance, uh, what this place can actually hold. Well, we've got over 100 seats and 50 odd car parks, uh, including trailer parks and a bus park. So, you know, we're well positioned to cater for many, many travellers at the one time. 
um, obviously toilet facilities because we're a, a long distance travel stop as well. Um, and we get car clubs coming in from time to time. It's fantastic when we do because then we've, all of our car parking has, has got this great attraction yeah. of restore, restored cars, vintage cars, yeah. and it's fantastic when it happens. Now, when we look at menu, how many, how many pies do you actually make? Look, we're not a huge variety of pies. We don't make the 101. We do over a dozen pies, and that's because we can make that amount of pies fresh every day and fresh is best and it just makes the difference to a really good quality pie. But we've got beef pies, lamb pies, chicken pies, vegetable pies, vegan pies, gluten free pies. So we've still got quite a good wide range. So if, got, if someone comes up to you and says, hey mate, what's your beef? You can just point to the menu. That's right. And there's good choice of beef there. Um, not a silly question, but over a month or a week, uh, we must be looking at literally hundreds or even thousands of pies that get sold over this counter here. Oh look, and that's that's right. I mean, as you said, we're not busy early in the morning during a weekday, but you know, come during lunch times, weekends, this place will just be crowded and the pies are just flying out the door. How many people do you employ? Oh look, between the two bakeries, I suppose we're we're up near 90, 90 people. Yeah. 90 people. Yes, that's right. And of course, included in that is, is our fully qualified pastry teams at both of our bakeries. Uh, and then of course, our really helpful retail team. So See, It's the stuff behind the scenes that nobody sees. You walk into a place like this, a few girls behind the counter there, and, and you know you've got another store up north, and then you hear 90 people. Mate, well done, congratulations on that. And in, in, in this day and age, and being pro Aussie jobs, and, that, and that's what you stand for as well. Um, Russell, I want to thank you for the opportunity to, um, to showcase Heather Bray's Pies. Um, it's a wonderful place and, uh, wow, it's all just uh, upwards from here, mate. Yeah, look, it is. Yeah, and look, what we try and do here, we, we do try and celebrate what is Australian. I mean, the, the catchphrase as you come through the door is remember when Australia used to make stuff. And we're, we're celebrating, you know, the first holding off the line over there and we've got our FJ holding over here and you know, when Australia's, but Heather Bray's pies, we're still making and baking fresh product every day from Australian produce, and we're proud of it. Yeah, and it's fantastic. I'm glad I called in to see you. Keep up the great work, Russell. Thank you. Thank you very much, Fletch. All the best. Fletch made reference to my hat, and I've got to say, everything we do with our presentation is because we're a professional operation, we're an artisan bakery, and we're totally skilled in the ways of making pastry and pies, and we do it to the utmost exactness. What this place means to, to me personally is, look, it's my life. It's, 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 it's something I've created from nothing. You know, we, we set up Heather Bray's Pies decades ago up near Raymond Terrace, created a really nice ambient place for customers to come and enjoy, relax, have that meal break as they're traveling through. Um, you know, we take such pride in the pies that we make and the cakes that we bake that we do the best of what we do that you can get anywhere that really makes us that institution where everybody just decides that's where they want to stop when they're, when they're travelling through. Look, the, the history of pies in Australia, uh, Australians have been eating pies ever since pretty much um, since white civilization. Um, we. It was a very economical way of preparing food and transporting food back in the early days because you can envelope a nice hot meal in a pastry case. Uh, it, it was easily transported in the old pie cart. In fact, in Queensland, you probably heard of the flying pieman back at the turn of the previous century. Um, and we've, we've just developed and developed and developed until we get to the whole professional pie bakery and now the FJ Holden pie cart at is, is the extension of that. I'm Russell Cox, this is Heather Brace Pies, and we're looking forward to seeing you very soon. Well, I hope you've really enjoyed this week's episode of Classic Restos, a little trip out to Cootamundra, New South Wales, to share with you some of Graham's collection and this last segment at Heather Bray's Pies, Sally's Corner, New South Wales. If that didn't stir your appetite, well, nothing will. I hope you've enjoyed the show. Until next week, no matter where you're watching Classic Restos from, please ride and drive safe. I'm Fletch and I thank you very much for watching.
you can like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash classic restos TV and watch catch up episodes at shannons.com.au. Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's Insurance, where you can be a member of the Shannon's Club, Pace Farm the Enjoyable Egg, Hair and Forbes Machinery House, and Gun Lake Quarries.